A battery bank allows you to charge your cell phone while you're on the go. So the question is, which battery bank for under $30 is the best? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll compare the maximum output for each of the battery banks. Then we'll see which battery bank offers the most capacity. Finally, we'll see how long it takes to recharge a completely drained battery bank. At a very affordable price of only $9 is this S22 Mini. This is a very popular power bank with about 9,000 of these units sold in the last 30 days. This power bank is supposed to deliver 5,000 milliamp hours, which should be enough to charge most cell phones. They claim that their battery is constructed using advanced compression technology. This allows the battery to be half the size and weight. They claim you can charge two different devices at the same time. The S22 Mini is made in China, and the S22 Mini is very light at only 106 grams. I'll use two different battery analyzers to test out the USB-A ports on the power banks. The analyzer provides information on the volts in the top left corner and amps is on the right. And finally, the information in watts is just below the volts. The analyzer allows me to increase the power demand on the power bank until the power bank is overloaded and gives up. I increased the voltage until the S22 made it to 11.13 watts. I continued to increase the power demand from the S22 and the voltage and amps dropped quickly and finally gave up. Let's move the USB cable to the other port and see how it performs. And 11.25 watts is very close to the same as the first port and that's all the second port can deliver. Let's simulate charging two devices at the same time using two USB-A ports. I'll connect port 2 to the other tester. Port 1 is supplying 1 amp or 5 watts to the tester. And I gradually increase the power demand on both testers and the S2 is giving all it has at 6. 0.11 watts on the right side tester and 4.91 watts on the left side tester. That's a total of 11 watts. So whether you're charging one device or two devices, all you're going to get out of the S2 is a total of 11 watts. USB-C ports are a little trickier to test and the two analyzers that I just used won't always work. And the USB-C cable that I'll be using can handle up to 240 watts, which is plenty. I'll use a tester that'll keep track of the charging speed for a Samsung S20 Plus. And the S22 is charging at just over 5 volts at 1.36 amps. So 5 amps times 1.36 volts equals 6.86 watts. That's a pretty slow charge. Let's see if the S22 can do any better charging a Chromebook. And the S22 is still performing about the same at 7.3 watts, which is a very slow charge. At a price of $14 is this Miati power bank. What's nice about this deal is you get two different power banks for $14. Each power bank is rated for 5,000 milliamp hours. Just like the S22 Mini, the Miati is a very popular brand with 6,000 units sold in the last 30 days. The Miati is made in China, and the Miati weighs 116 grams. I bought two Miati power banks, and neither of them has a functional USB-C for charging devices. So the port is only good for charging the power bank. Let's test the USB-A port. And the Miati made it to 12.61 watts, or about a watt better than the S22 before it finally gave up. At a very reasonable price of only $16 is this Love Letty brand. It's a 15,000 milliamp hour dual USB power bank. It claims to offer fast charging capability. It also claims to be compatible with all smart smartphones and USB devices. This power bank uses a high density lithium polymer battery. The Love Letty is made in China and it's 215 grams for the Love Letty. The type C on the Love Letty is only for charging the power bank. Starting off the USB-A test on the left side port. And the Love Letty power bank is performing the best yet, holding steady at 13.29 watts to move into the lead over the Miati. I'll go ahead and connect the Love Letty power bank to both testers. The analyzer on the left is using about 5 watts. And the tester on the right made it to about 8.5 watts before the Love Letty ran out of love. That's a total of 13.43 watts. At a price of only $17, is this X9 brand. About 10,000 of these units sell every 30 days, making this a very popular power bank. The manufacturer claims it can charge most cell phones 8 to 10 times. Considering the price, it offers a very large capacity at 26,800 milliamp hours. It has four different outputs and a 2.5x fast charge. It can charge four different devices at the same time. And the X9 is by far the heaviest yet at 372 grams. The X9 has one USB-C in and out port and three USB-A outs. Let's go ahead and see how the X9 performs using the two ports. And the X9 is performing quite a bit better than the previous three brands. After dialing in both analyzers to find the sweet spot, the X9 is holding steady at 6.76 watts on the left side tester and 8.49 on the right. That's a total of just over 15 watts, the best yet. And the X9's USB-C is delivering more than twice the wattage compared to the S22 Mini at 14.87 watts. At a price of $17 before the coupon or $14 using the coupon is this Keel brand. It claims to offer a 22.5 watt fast charge. 
charge. The keel is made in China and it's 220 grams for the keel. And the keel has two USB-A ports and one USB-C in and out port. And the left side USB-A port on the keel is doing by far the best yet at 18.31 watts. Let's set the tester to about two amps or about 10 watts and we'll connect the other USB-A port to the other tester. And the keel is performing even better than the X9. And it's 10.65 watts on the left tester and 9.93 on the right. That's a total of just over 20 watts. And the USB-C on the Kyo is performing by far the best yet at 20.15 watts. We'll be testing two different portable chargers made by Inu. The first one costs $20. This is a very popular charger with about 85,000 reviews and over 10,000 units sold every 30 days. The manufacturer claims you can charge an iPhone up to 78% in just one hour. The battery capacity is 10,000 milliamp hours. Made in China. And the NU weighs 206 grams. And the NU has two USB-A ports and an in and out USB-C. And the NU's USB-A perform well at 15.36 watts, which is about the same as the X9. Let's set the left side tester to 1.5 amps at 7.65 watts, and let's use the right side tester to test the right side USB-A port. And the right side is very close to 8 watts. So the left and right side together are making about 15 watts. And the USB-C on the NU is performing about the same as the Kyol at just over 20 watts. Also the price of $20 is this Sophia brand. It's a 15,000 milliamp hour fast charging portable phone charger. It has a built-in iOS cable and a Type-C cable which supports almost all smart devices. Up to 22.5 watts. The Sophia is made in China. And it's 251 grams for the Sophia. And the USB-A port is performing just about as well as the Kyol power bank at 17.72 watts. Let's test the built-in USB-C cable first. And the built-in USB-C is making about 16.41 watts before giving up. And the built-in lightning cable performed almost as well at just over 14 watts. And the USB-C in and out port made it to almost 15 watts charging a cell phone or about 5 watts less than the Kyol in the NU. Also the price of $20 is this iWalk brand. It claims to be a 9,000 milliamp hour ultra compact power bank. It includes a built-in cable. It's compatible with many different iPhone models. Made in China. And the iWalk is fairly light at 175 grams. In order to test the iWalk, I'll have to use a couple of adapters and an additional analyzer. And the iWalk made it to just over 14 watts before powering down. At a price of $20 is this Fiat brand. It's a small portable charger for the iPhone. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity. They claim it'll charge an iPhone between one and one and a half hours. This mini power bank supports pass-through charging. In other words, you can charge your iPhone while charging the power bank. The FOB brand is made in China. And the FOB's the lightest yet at 99 grams. Just like the iWalk, I'll have to use a couple of adapters and an additional analyzer to test the FIOB. And the FIOB didn't perform quite as well as the iWalk at 11.69 watts. At a price of $20 is this Bassus brand. It's a 20 watt fast charging 10,000 milliamp hour slim battery pack. It claims to be the fastest charging power bank within $20. It has nine built-in safety protections to protect you and your device. Made in China. And it's 249 grams for the Bashes. And the Bashes claims to make 20 watts. Let's test the USB-A port first. And the Bashes performed well at 17.23 watts before the device began to power down. And the USB-C port is advertised as a 20 watt power supply and it performed as advertised at just over 20 watts. At a price of $22 is this Anchor brand. It's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack with Power IQ charging technology. It claims to be one of the slimmest and lightest chargers on the market. It can deliver up to 12 watts. The Anchor is made in China. The Anchor Slim weighs 242 grams. And the Anchor Slim can only charge devices using its USB-A port. The other two ports are for charging the power bank. And the Anchor Slim only made it to 12.7 watts before experiencing a voltage drop and powering down. And the second portable charger that we'll be testing that's made by NU costs $22. It claims to offer a 22.5 watt speedy charge. It also has a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity. Charges up the two different devices at once. It also includes a flashlight. The NU is made in China. 209 grams for the NU. The NU has two USB-A ports and one USB-C. With just one of the USB-A ports attached to the tester, the NU made it to 15.84 watts or about two watts less than the Kyol. With both USB-A ports attached to the tester, the NU made it to 7.53 watts on the left side tester and 8.36 on the right side for a total of 15.89 watts. And the USB-C performed about the same as the USB-A at very close to 15 watts. At a price of $23 is this DurcoPow brand. It's a 20,000 milliamp hour portable outdoor waterproof solar power bank. It has dual 5 volt USB ports, LED flashlight with a compass. It's supposed to be water resistant, shock resistant, and dust proof. The DurcoPow is made in China. And the Durkapiao weighs 229 grams.
The Durko Power has two USB A's and one USB C, and the USB C is only for charging the power bank. And the Durko Power ran out of power at just over 13 watts, which is quite a bit less than many of the other power banks. Testing the USB A ports at the same time, the left side port made it to 7.2 watts and the right side 6.05. That's a total of just over 13 watts. At a price of $26, is this Urquist brand? It claims to have a 25,800 milliamp hour capacity. You can charge two different devices at once. It fully recharges itself in 8 to 12 hours with a 2.1 amp input charger. And the Urkus weighs 328 grams. And the Urkus has two USB-A ports and a USB-C. And the Urkus only made it to 12.11 watts before the power bank powered down. Testing the USB-A ports at the same time. And the Urkus only made it to 6.18 watts on the left side tester and 5.14 on the right side. That's just over 11 watts total. And the USB-C performs slightly better than the USB-A ports at just over 13 watts. At a price of $30 without the coupon, or $24 with a coupon is this MREG brand. It claims to be waterproof, dustproof, and shockproof. It claims to have a super bright flashlight. It claims to offer a 42,800 milliamp hour capacity. Made in China. And the MREG is by far the heaviest at 514 grams. The MREG has two USB-A's and one USB-C port for only charging the power bank. Testing just one of the USB-A ports, the MREG made it to 13.89 watts before overloading and powering down. Testing both of the USB-A ports, the left side port made it to 7.02 watts and the right side 7.16 watts. That's a total of just over 14 watts which is quite a bit less than some of the other brands. Also at a price of $30 is this RG Voda. It has a battery capacity of 38,800 milliamp hours. It also has four USB outputs. Compatible with iPhone as well as Android. Made in China. And the RG Voda is also pretty heavy at 430 grams. And the RG Voda is a pretty large and heavy power bank but it only produces a little over 12 watts. Testing just two of the four ports at once, the left side port is just over 6 watts and the right side is a little over 6 watts so that's a total of 12 watts for the RG Voda. Charging the Chromebook with the RG Voda's USB-C port, it only made it to 12.38 watts which is quite a bit less than many of the other brands. At a price of $32 without the coupon or $27 with it is this good brand. It claims to have a 36,000 milliamp hour capacity. It also has 4 cables and 6 outputs. It can also be charged using sunlight. It has a 15 watt fast charging capability. The good is made in China. And a good AAA weighs 425 grams. And a good is also a pretty large and heavy battery bank, but it performed quite a bit better than the RG Voda at 17.83 watts with one USB-A. Using two different USB-A ports, the good continued to outperform the RG Voda. And the left port made it to 6.67 watts, and the right side 10.73 for almost 18 watts total. The good also has a wireless charger, which did work properly. The USB-C port on the power bank delivers 13.71 watts, which is once again better than the RG Voda. The Good has four built-in charging cords on the power bank, and they performed almost the same as the ports at 17.76 watts. All the previous power banks cost $30 or less, but the Anchor 737 cost $92. It's supposed to have a 24,000 milliamp hour capacity. It claims to offer 140 watts of high-speed input and output. You can charge your iPhone, Samsung, MacBook, Dell, or even your AirPods. Made in China. And the Anchor's the heaviest yet at 640 grams. And the Anchor performed almost as well as the Good at 16.9 four watts on the USB-A port. And the display on the Anchor 737 provides a lot of good information. With just one USB-C connected to the computer, the Anchor is delivering 93.6 watts. I did test the accuracy of the Anchor's display and it's right on target. With a second USB-C connected and charging a second computer, the total output is 130 watts. Very impressive! Charging two computers and a phone, the total is just over 131 watts, which is pretty close to its 140 watt rating. And the $92 Anchor offers by far the highest USB-C charging speed at 131 watts. However, the USB-C charging port for the Kiol, NUB61, and Bashes perform well at around 20 watts. Single port USB-A charging output varied by quite a bit, but the Kiol came out on top at just over 18 watts. Several of the other brands weren't too far behind at around 17 watts. If you need to use at least two USB-A ports at once, the total combined output was the most with the Kiol at just over 20 watts. Good finished in second place at just over 17. I just finished topping off all the batteries. So let's measure the total watt hour capacity for the S22 and the Miati. I'll drain the batteries at a discharge rate at around 10 watts. And it's been close to an hour and a half and both batteries are completely drained. Both of the battery banks are supposed to have a capacity of 18.5 watt hours and they both came up a little bit short. 14.31 for the S22 Mini and 14.29 for the Miati.
And the Love Letty power bank is up against the X9. And the Love Letty is rated for 55.5 watt hours, and the X9 is rated for 99.2. And the Love Letty power bank is supposed to make 55.5 watt hours, but it only delivered 41% of its rating at only 22.5 watt hours. And the X9 is rated for 99.2 watt hours, and it only delivered 55% of its rating at 54.89 watt hours. And the Kiol and the NU are fully charged. And the Kiol is rated for 95.5 watt hours, and the NU is only rated for 37. And the Kiel really struggled at only 26.58, which is only 28% of its rated capacity. And the NU is still going strong. And the NU is finally out of juice at 32.77 watt hours, which is actually pretty good at 89% of its rating. And it's the Sophia versus the Bashes. The Sophia is rated for 55.5 watt hours, and the Bashes is rated for 37. And the Sophia delivered 50% of its advertised capacity at 27.75 watt hours. And the Bashes performed quite a bit better than the Sophia at 30.4. 6 watt hours, which is 82% of its rating. And it's the Anchor Slim against the NU. Both units are supposed to make 37 watt hours. And the Anchor Slim only made it to 26.05 watt hours, or 70% of its rated capacity. And the NU outperformed the Anchor at 29.92 watt hours, which is 81% of its rating. And it's the MREG going up against the good. And the MREG is rated for 158.4 watt hours, and it really struggled at only 52.11, which is only 33% of its rating. The good is supposed to hold 100 and it only delivered 50.59, which is 38% of its rating. And it's the Durko Pal going up against the Urkus. And the Durko Pal gave up very early at only 21.33 watt hours. That's only 29% of its 74 watt hour rating. And the Urkus is supposed to have a capacity of 95.5 watt hours. And it only made it to 50.76, which is 53% of its rating. And it's the RG Voda against the Anchor. And the RG Voda is rated for 143.6 watt hours, and it came up way short at only 65. The Anchor did a lot better at 68.7 watt hours than most of all the power banks. I had to test the iWalk by itself and it made 22.9 watt hours, which is 69% of its rated capacity. I also had to test the Fiat by itself. Unfortunately, it only made 10.96 watt hours, missing its 18.5 watt hour rating by quite a bit. If it's all about capacity, the Anchor 737 came out on top at 68.7 watt hours. The RG Vota finished in second at 65.4 and X9 third at 54.9. Another way to consider performance is to compare how the power banks perform based upon their rated watt hour capacity. And the NU B61 did the best, making it to 89% of its rating. Bashes finished in second at 82%, and NU B41, 81%. Now that we've drained all the batteries, let's see how quickly they can be charged. I'll be using an analyzer, which will keep track of the watts as well as the amount of time it takes to charge the power banks. I'll also be using a Type C power adapter, which will support up to 45 watts of charging output. And the S22 Mini is charging at 8. 7 watts. While the S22 is slow, the Miati is even slower at only 6.4 watts. And the NU is by far the fastest so far at around 17.27 watts. And the Kiol is also charging very quickly at 14.4 watts. And the X9 is charging quite a bit slower than the Kiol and the NU at a little bit less than 11 watts. And the S22 Mini is fully charged and it took about 2 hours and 53 minutes. And the Miati has about the same rated capacity as the S22 Mini. However, it took an extra hour and a half longer to charge at 4 hours and 24 minutes minutes. And the NU is at 100% in 2 hours and 54 minutes. And the Kiol took almost an hour longer than the NU at 3 hours and 49 minutes. And the X9 took just over 8 hours to reach 100% charge. Let's kick off charging our next round of power banks. And the Love Letty power bank is charging pretty slowly at 8.6 watts. And the Sophia is charging at about twice as fast as the Love Letty at around 16.63 watts. And the Bashes is even faster at around 17.69 watts. And the Anchor Slim is pretty slow at only 7.4 watts. And the NU is charging at 11.46 watts. And the Love Letty is finally finished charging in 6 hours and 23 minutes. And the Sophia is fully charged and it did perform well in around 4 hours and 7 minutes. And the Bashes was a little faster than the Sophia in only 3 hours and 54 minutes. And the NU needed almost 4 hours and 12 minutes which is about the same as the Sophia. And the Anchor Slim is very slow at almost 5 and a half hours. Let's kick off charging our next round of power banks. And the Good is charging pretty slowly at only 8.3 watts. And the MREG is even even slower at around 5.7. And the Durko Pow is also pretty slow at 8.3 watts. And the RG Voda is just as slow as the Durko Pow at around 8.3 watts. And the Urkus is doing a little bit better than the RG Voda at around 10.65 watts. I'm using a 140 watt charger on the Anchor since it claims to charge and discharge at 140 watts. And the Anchor is starting off at 115 watts but it is charging at a higher rate of speed by the minute. 
It's been a few minutes now, and the anchor is at almost 131 watts. And it's only been 46 minutes, and the anchor is almost fully charged. And the anchor is fully charged in only about 48 minutes. Very impressive. And the Durka Pal is fully charged in 5 hours and 6 minutes. And the Urkist has a much larger capacity than the Durka Pal, and it's fully charged in just under 8 hours. And the Good didn't do so good at just over 9.5 hours. And the RG Voda took even longer to charge at almost 10.5 hours. And the MREG really struggled at almost 13 hours and 8 minutes. Let's kick off testing our final two battery banks. And the FIAB is charging at around 10.2 watts. And the iWalk is charging quite a bit slower than the FIAB at just under 7 watts. And the FIAB is finished charging in about 2 hours and 33 minutes. And the iWalk is finally finished charging at 6 hours and 25 minutes. Not including the $92 Anchor 737, the power banks with the highest charging watts include the Bashes, NUB61, Sophia, and Kiol. The charging rate ranged from 14 to 17 watts, which had a huge impact on charging speed. The FIAB and S22 Mini did charge very quickly, but they have a very small watt hour capacity. On the other hand, the NUB61, Kiol, Bashes, and Sophia charge relatively quickly considering their capacity. Possibly a more helpful way to make sense of input current and charging speed is to consider how many minutes it takes for the battery bank to gain one watt hour of energy storage. And the 92 dollar anchor is simply amazing at less than one minute to charge a full watt hour of energy. Finishing in second place is the NUB61 performing extremely well at only 5.3 minutes to bank one watt hour. When it comes to power banks, there's quite a bit of difference regarding size. If it's all about size, the S22 Mini is the smallest at approximately 73 cubic centimeters. The Miati is also very compact at around 80. Finally, the FIAB is at 85.4. So which battery bank is the best? I've converted raw scores into an A through F grading scale to help make sense of the results. And the Kiel earned A's in every category and seems like a great battery bank for under $20. My personal favorite in the battery bank that I would choose is the NUB61. It also earned A's in every category and outperformed the Kiol for charging speed and has a little bit more storage capacity. The Bashes also earned A's in every category, but its storage capacity is a little bit less than the in use. Finally, if power bank size and money isn't the factor, the Anchor 737 is by far the best. Because of the time of year and weather, I didn't have a chance to test the solar charging capability of the power banks. If I put together another review on power banks, I'll try to include this in the next review. Please let me know if you'd like to see another review on larger power banks. Also, I'm going to be at the Matt's Off-Road Recovery Games this year in March, so if you'd like to know more about that event, please check out the video description. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested, so if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching, please take care, and I look forward to next time.